Mr. Abhi Singh, welcome to the show. Thanks, Brad. Good to be here. Yeah, thrilled you're here. Excited to talk about a whole host of things. We're talking about leadership. We're going to talk about culture. We're talking about sales. First, I want you to maybe give a brief description of the video you sent me that uh, you have your team watch several times a year about culture, about Dan Clark, and maybe why it's so meaningful to you. Yeah, yeah. so I had a good fortune meeting Dan about 10 years ago okay. at a speech and uh, it just blew me away, right? And he talks about all these different things. If you imagine Dan, he was a college football player okay. and went pro, went, had some significant struggles in life uh, from a physical aspect when he got injured and brought himself all the way back to the top of his profession. And it's all about culture for him. And he goes around, he's a consultant for the NFL, and there's this wonderful video uh, that he gave. I think I, I sent the link to you too. Right. And he talks about comparing and contrasting the, the 1990-something Tampa Bay Buccaneers versus the 1990-something Dallas Cowboys. Mm -hmm. Winning his team in the season, losing his team in the season. And he walks in, and it's all about the fit and why are people here. And, and it comes back to why are you here. And when he interviewed the, the, uh, the Buccaneers, he walks in, and I won't uh, steal his thunder, but he, he walks in this organization, and it's it, – it, it makes probably the worst lumber yard you've ever seen look good, right? <laughs> I mean, there's pizza box in the corner. There's mixed up chairs. One ch chair is broken. The lady's chewing her gum. She's like, yeah, go in the back. And no one knows who he is. And then he walks into the Cowboys, and it's that 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 white glove service, mm -hmm. right? And I make our team watch it for the sheer fact is this is what we want emulate to be. But the core the core message in it is why are you here? Mm -hmm. And and you have guys that that are here, you know, to do a job and just get a paycheck. And you have guys that are here and girls that are here, I should say, to to win something. And whether that's that's an order, a customer, the industry, whatever it is, mm -hmm. but they're very focused on what their their mission is. And what resonates with my team is as we're growing the way we're going, we can't forget what we're here to accomplish, right? right? And that and we're here to, to provide opportunities for our people, and we're here to be the best we can in the space we want to play. In. And when you keep pulling it back, once we watch on a quarterly basis, just as good refresher, yeah. this is what we're here to do. This is why we're here, and we resonate that throughout the team. So when someone comes into a new South branch, hey, how are you? Good to see you. Can I help you? Versus, hey, hold on a second, I'm on the phone. Right. Right. And, and, and no contract, a contractor wants that. Mm -hmm. you, know, you want to feel special, and that's that's what we aim to do. Yeah. The thing that I took away too, and started thinking about our own team is everyone has a role to play. Right. And how we make people feel, what the perception is, everyone can do that, and. In the video, he talks about the different feeling he got from the receptionist. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, he felt like he was an annoyance. Mm -hmm. She was on the phone talking to her friend. He had to sit out there. The Dallas Cowboys, he said, you know, took me by the hand, introduced me to everyone. He goes, I thought we were going steady after about 15 <laughs> minutes. Made me feel like I was the most important right. person on earth. And you're like, that's the receptionist, right? Right. Um, Question for you, though, and the mismatched chairs jumped out for me. So he walks in, like the decor has changed. I think someone might watch that and say, hey, if we look at our lumber yard, you know, we have some guy who's still wearing shirts that, you know, have the old logo from six years ago. And, you know, maybe there isn't this consistent look and feel. Does that mean I got to go spend millions of dollars and, you know, redo the trucks and new shirts for everyone and rebranding and do all that? Understanding the scope of your business what would your recommendation be there when it comes to that, maybe some of the inconsistencies, whether it's the chairs right. or it's the shirts they wear or anything along those lines? Well, I think it's up to our people. You know, we uh, we go around and our team always hears me say, it's up to you. And it's it, it, almost nauseatingly. And they're like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do here? But the teams that we have, they understand why they're here. And if they want to wear, you know, a Foo Fighters shirt and a Harley Davidson shirt, hey, rock on, do it. Um but it's not so much the appearance as what's underneath. Mm, okay. That's what's got to resonate out. Yeah. Personally, uh, when I was at the branch level, I made sure my, my team had uh, always had a logo shirt on, but it gave me eight or nine options. So okay. some folks wore golf shirts. Some, a couple of guys wore tank top, which, which wasn't pretty. And then, uh, you know, you, you just went from there. But it's it's the culture and the theme and the message you want to, to build and what's your brand and your people are the biggest the biggest proponents of that. Mm -hmm. So if you if you say this is what you have to wear every day, I worked for a company uh, in my formative years, which was a great organization, uh, but you had to wear a name tag every day. I'm like, are you kidding me? Yep. You have to wear name tags? Like seriously? I mean, we sell we sell X, X product. Um, that was an annoyance, 
right? And uh, so we don't want to go that far. Yeah. But we, we give our folks roughly four or 500 bucks a year okay. just in, in clothing, in New South clothing, get whatever you want. And it builds that pride, right? They come yeah. around like, hey, we're New South. We have some folks that are thinking about getting New South tattooed on their arms. I don't advise doing that. The but, can do uh, bear. The can do bear. That would be That's awesome, it. right? That would be cool. I'm not, I'm not tough enough to do that. You know, <laughs> I, I'm, 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 yeah. So, but. so tell me about that phrase, it's up to you. Uh, mm -hmm. Over the years in your leadership and years in management, how have you been able to coach people or set up a framework where you feel confident? Because I think this idea of going to the teams and power them and say, this is your story, it's up right. to you. Right. I think that feels like something we all want to be able to do. Right. And then you might come back and other people say, it's actually this location with this manager, that would scare the hell out of me. Right. Can't leave it up to them. How do you develop your team to the point where you can truly say, it's up to you. Whatever you guys choose to do, right? It's, you know, that book. It's your ship. Right. You guys got to own that. Right. Any lessons you've learned along the way of things you got to do or things that you can't do that might be somewhat non-obvious? Uh, yeah. So, you know, the, the it's up to you phrase is we've all worked for that organization or that person says, this is how you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. No matter what, get it done. Right. And you're like, it's just not right. It's not going to work. You don't get it. And from my position, I think the biggest thing I can do uh, or the most important role I have other than driving culture is the people we put on the team okay. in leadership spots. Um, because I don't want to hire a person that constantly needs me to tell them what to do. I want to hire a person that says, hey, I'm going. I'm like, whoa, you know, you're, a, you're a race car on a dirt track, right? Slow down a little bit. Um, and I, I've had the good fortune in my career to work for a, a bunch of great guys that, that told me that exact same thing. Uh, Greg Rayfield, Mark Thompson, J.J. Jackson. Uh, but a guy named Rick Fantham, who's the president and CEO of the Hajoka Corporation, he, uh, his, his, his motto was, it's up to you. You have the freedom to live in your dream. Um, Can you say that again? He has, you have the freedom to live into your dream. You have the freedom to live into your dream. Yeah. Okay. And if you haven't, if you haven't met Rick, you have to, he's, okay. he's just, he's that guy, right? He's phenomenal. Um, and he, he sh shared this formula that has really been, I'd say a cornerstone of my success. And it's the only business formula that's only worked hundred percent of the time. And it's <laughs> L times P times C equals R. Right. L times P times C equals R. Okay. Right. right. And this is, I, I am, I, I, I totally took this from him. It's my biggest takeaway. So Rick, <laughs> that's thank what, that's you. That's why I'm writing it down. Yeah. <laughs> if it's good, I'm stealing it from you. So great. <laughs> but the R is results in that formula, okay. right? It's, it's always, everyone's focused on the results. And Bradley, I want you to do it this way because we want to get the results, right? And your results say it's a 10 and it's great. But if you focus on the left side of that equation, the L being leadership, the P being people, okay. and the C, it should actually be C squared with customers and culture. Uh, okay. And you drive those, you increase any one of those, it exponentially increases the result. Okay. So my job is to put the right leaders in place, coach them in, on some of the mistakes I've made, which are, the list is long, but distinguished, and put the right people in and, 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 and entice them to chase the right customers. Okay. And if we have the right leaders and the right people, the culture is going to come, right? And then, then it's execution and it's up to them. But there's no way I can sit in Greenville, South Carolina, and tell a guy in Greensville, North Carolina, how to run his business. Mm -hmm. If I do, either I'm the wrong guy or he's the wrong guy. So.